the Bhagavad Gita. So I'm going to teach you Bhagavad Gita without having a Bhagavad Gita here. I might lie to you, right? That's right. Only thing is, I'm not doing anything new today. We're going to... Uh, Bhagavad Gita was not, it's not a launch and leave. I don't want to launch Bhagavad Gita to you. Leave chapters 3 and 4, go on to chapter 5, forget about Karma Yoga altogether. Right? So we want to go back, revi revisit it. Any questions that you may have been not sure about anything we have, I'm just going to quickly go through it. Because starting next week, we're starting with chapter 5. I have slides for chapter 5, I just wanted to make sure we're all clear with this. And uh, everything is good going forward, because it's, it's like building a building. We need the foundation to be very strong, right? We, when we don't have a strong foundation, when we build up, there's chance of anything, fall, the building falling over. So by reviewing this, I know we have some, some new students that weren't with me when we first started this. We have all of that covered. And there's no point of uh, going through the scriptures again, because you've already seen what's there, and we've already verified it with the text I have. So that's why I'm coming here without a text today. Sound good? Yeah. Who thinks, who would actually want to do a review of Bhagavad Gita? Okay. As long as I have one hand, I will uh, go towards it and um, pay attention because something might be coming up next week. And uh, if I'm doing a review this week, you tell me what's have coming up next week. Okay. I'm not saying that. That's what he's saying. I'm not saying that. So, you guys tell me. Someone set the scene. Where does Bhagavad Gita take place? Hand went up first. Yes, do you know the name of the war zone? Kurukshetram, yes. Who's fighting who? Pandavas, yes. Kauravas, right? And their cousins. So, who's this conversation between the Bhagavad Gita? I saw your hand. Who's uh, Arjuna? Who's Krishna? Tell me who Krishna is. He's a reincarnation of God. So he's an avatar coming down to give us this knowledge so that we have exactly what we need to learn so we don't go in the wrong path. I have a question. I'm just starting. Okay, go on. Um, when does he come? Like, how do you know when he comes? Like, Remember that picture I showed you where there's, we have Narayan in the front, uh, Vishnu in the front, Mahavishnu, we had 10 avatars. Where are you ready for yours? Yeah. So she will talk about the second incarnation. Yeah, but is there like a certain time when he comes? When will he come? I already taught you this. When there is a rise of what? Injustice. Yes. Um, I have a question too. Okay. Who wrote the book? Who wrote the book? We already answered this question. Um. Uh, you, you, you know the answer. No, 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 I know that it's, it's, it's all these bonivers, their name starts with B. Vashishter, oh, uh, right? Is it? Pralia uh, wrote it. Pralia wrote it as a. Vashishter was saying it. Vashishter was saying it. Where are you? Yasa, Yasa. Yasa, yes, Yasa, that's what's right. No, but the Bhagavad Gita, why does it always say. Yes, Yasa, Yasa. Yasa, Yasa. Srimad is the. The respect we give for it. Anything with Sri is highly reputable. Bhagavad Gita. Right? Anything else? So, Arjuna is the son of Pandu. Is that the Kurukshetra background, battleground? His charioteer. So, what's a charioteer? You already answered. Yes, sir. It's like someone that drives you. Yeah, he's your driver. In today's world, he's your driver. He's the drive your car. So, you have the. Uh, Arjuna has his Lord Krishna driving his car or his buggy or his chariot. Right, what else do I have here? Gita is basically just a conversation between Bhagavan, which is God, Sri Krishna, and Arjuna, who is who is Arjuna to Krishna? You already answered. You've already answered. You've already answered. You face. I already gave you these slides. Why are you copying this down? No, you do that. Okay, I'll give this to you. Again, don't worry about that. And uh, I can put it online too. Yes, sir. His friend. What else is he? You answered. Yes, sir. His God. So it means, means Arjuna is a devotee of Krishna. What else is he that wasn't said in the Bhagavad Gita? 
Yes, so uh, they're related, right? But also, is it his ancestor? Because Ar is this Arjuna's, uh, Arjuna's ancestors, one of them were Bharata. Bharata, yes. You know how Krishna always is son of Bharata, yes. Wasn't Rama also Bharata's brother? No, these are different Bharatas. Yeah, they, they just happen to have the same names. Just like you might have a friend whose name is Lamboda, and that doesn't make him your dad, right? They're just two different people. Everyone clear so far? What is this, guys? Who remembers this? This picture? Oh. Answered, answered, yes, in the back. Uh, uh, yeah, or tell me what I made you do because of this. Oh. Oh, yeah. Why don't you read it out loud so everyone hears? Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all, Mystics? Mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence. Opulence? Victory, extraordinary power, and mor morality. That, that is my opinion. Okay, so what was the homework assignment that I gave you? Say person. Were you here? Okay. Uh, I don't think I believe it. I don't think I asked you. Oh, What's the homework assignment? You, you, you. With this? Okay, you're, you're very desperate to answer. I think it was to have a picture of Arjuna. Yes, so who still has this picture? Was this a... Okay, so basically what this slide is saying, guys, wherever there's a picture, or wherever there's Krishna and Arjuna in person, or we have a picture of Krishna and Arjuna, there will uh, certainly be opulence. What is opulence? All forms of wealth. You'll have all forms of wealth just by keeping this picture. Um, in the ending, it said that's my opinion. Yes, that is the opinion of Sanjaya. But it's still the last verse of the Bhagavad Gita. So this is not part of Maha, like, this is not anything else. That's Sanjaya saying to uh, uh, the king that this is his opinion wherever there is. And we saw that happen in the war because they won, right? There'll be victory. Wherever you go, you will have victory. You don't have to be afraid of losing anything. There'll be extraordinary power, right? Keep it, believe in it, and that will happen. There'll be morality, and that's what I want to infuse into you. And guys, when I tell you something, I follow it, right? I don't tell you something and go on to do something else. My phone, I'm not sure how many, can you tell them what there is in the background? Exactly, my phone, and this is not even, this is a work phone, yet I still keep the picture of Krishna and Arjuna as my background. In my laptop, there's a picture of a Krishna and Arjuna. In my wallet, there's a picture of Rama, but we're all in the same, same program, same, uh, same, it's all the same, one and the same here. Very good. So whoever is lacking this picture so far, I want you to go get yourself a, a physical picture, at least keep it in this book. If you're, if you're already carrying a wallet around, keep it in there, school book, school locker, or if you have like you know iPods, cell phones, or your parents' cell phones, laptops, computers, whatever it is, parents put this as the background. Because when your parents get rich, who gets rich? They're gonna give it to you, they're not gonna give it to somebody else. Right? Or they'll give you something out of it. Right? And whenever your parents are well off, they will make sure that you're definitely in a good position. Clear with me? Lakshmi's here, you will get all sorts of Lakshmi's just by keeping this picture. Don't pray this. Don't, you don't even have to pray to this picture. Just keep the picture there. Karma Yoga, chapter 3. Text 3, we're saying, Sri Bhagavan said, O Sindhas Arjuna, I have explained to you that there are two classes of men who try to realize the self. Some are inclined to understand it by empirical philosophical speculation, others by devotional service. Who wants to break that down for me? You've done it. You've done it. Come on, come on, guys. Before I start picking, you, I choose you. Let's go, break it down, please. Okay, what else is it saying? So let's, let's take a stab at it. So I have explained that there are two classes of men. One is devotional service. Can you tell me what the other one is, as per this? Text 3. Some are inclined to understand it by? 
Okay, some are inclined to understand about empirical philosophical speculation. That's what we're doing. We're empirically, we're taking down this book. We're uh, deciphering it. I'm explaining to you. You're asking me questions. We're trying to understand it as full as possible. Right? That's one way to learn God. What is one way to approach God is to uh, go by the scriptures, learn the, learn, learn the prayers, say the prayers. Next one, very simple, devotional service. Right? And we had a big talk on devotional service. Okay, so we have one class which is searching for truth in scriptures, lectures, and classes. So you're already in the first class. You're in class. That, that, brings, that brings you down to the first, sec, uh, first, uh, first group. Also in class, we're making you learn stuff. We're making you present. We already had one great presentation. We have another great presentation today. So you're also learning and you're teaching. That way you're already in the first one. Second one, devotional service. What is devotional service? Start. Okay. Uh, how have you been helping your parents? Can you say that, sir? Yeah. Uh, she's washing her dishes at home. Is that true? Uh, you. That's okay. So that, that's a very good start. So uh, you're washing your dishes. Good. I mean, you're still young. You know, you still want to play and watch TV. That's good. So it's good that you're washing your own dishes, and you can go on to you know start washing your uh, brother, brother's dishes, and you know just start helping him. What else are you guys doing? Yes, ma'am. Taking out the trash. <laughs> Sleeping on the couch. <laughs> no, I think you're. I think you're just hearing stuff. <laughs> yes. Making food for my mom. Making. Sorry. I make. Oh, you're making food for your mom. Very good. I think that needs to be. You need to go to the Somebody needs to clap for that. That deserves uh, some kind of recognition. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pardon? I can do it. Clean the house. So you guys get what I'm trying to say. Devotional service is not driving to a temple, finding the biggest temple you can find and sweeping it. That's not it. Just just do some little stuff. When you're walking out the door, hold the door for somebody. Right? If you if somebody calls you for help, you lend a helping hand. That's what the devotional service is. Really? So if you like do simple stuff like it, like someone asks for help, you help them? Yes. Help yes. Because within your friend, if he's asking you for some help, there's Krishna or God within him, right? When you help him, you're helping the God. You have to realize that you're, you're not only helping him, you're helping the God within him. When you're thinking that you're helping the God within him, you are doing service to that God. You're doing puja to the God within him. Right? So you're doing devotional service. Does that make sense? Does that break it down? Yeah? So, where am I? Text 8. Devotional service. So basically, the second homework was go do something good for somebody else. Now, don't stop... She's taking out the, she's washing her dishes. Next step is let's bring it up a notch. Let's not stop with doing the first one. Let's take it up a notch, do something different. Make sure when you walk out, when you're, when somebody asks you, you guys have to stand out. You guys are not the regular kids that we see at your school. You're not the same as your schoolmates. You're coming here, we're teaching you about Tirith, we're teaching you Tirupra, right? That should make you a better person. That should make you a little bit more humble. You should work on reducing anger. You should work on helping people. And basically, think about that. When you when there's somebody there who's working, you, you've seen them before, now you know that they're trying to work on their anger issues. It doesn't happen overnight, but you see them trying to, right? You see them helping somebody, which they haven't been doing so before. Doesn't that mean you're changing? You're changing in a positive way, right? That's how you guys make us proud. Because I'm not here to make you memorize anything, right? It's not about memorizing. It's about living a better life, and that's what makes me proud. That's what makes this organization proud. Are you guys with me? So let's look at the next translation. Anybody want to read it? Uh, you, ma'am, please. The, the form you prescribe, prescribe. prescribe beauty for action is better than in, 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 action. in action. A man cannot even maintain his physical body without work. Anyone want to take a stab at it? You, sir, why don't you take a stab at it? Yes. What else is 